the idea of passive Airbnb, get that out of your head. It's really, it's the exception and not the rule. If you're advanced, like most of my existing subscribers are, Airbnb can be closer to passive income. What's up, Airbnb Nation? This is Danny here again. I know that the camera is a little bit dark, but I had to take this opportunity. I'm sitting on the balcony in my Airbnb. Istanbul's behind me. In fact, the Hagia Sophia is somewhere over there. I think that's it right there. Um, so I wanted to take this opportunity to get a nice, a nice background. This is a this is an amateur setup. It's my cell phone. I do have a mic, but no fancy lights behind me. It's about the content, right? So this week's Airbnb quick tip is about um, I think it's ten things I'm gonna lay out that you should think about before you become an Airbnb host. I'm gonna be creating a few more videos geared towards new Airbnb hosts because if you recall, Airbnb was spawned in this time period a decade ago. The financial crisis came, people were hurting for money, at which point the idea of letting someone sleep on your couch, in your extra bedroom, in your house while you're on vacation, th to take a vacation, you would sacrifice that. The idea became much more reasonable because of the economic crisis at the time. Well, we're kind of in one similar, depending on how long this takes. So my prediction is that there will be a plethora of new Airbnb hosts over the next uh, six months to a year. Especially when Airbnb goes public, there's gonna be a lot of uh, fanfare, a lot of new people. Believe it or not, Airbnb is really not that known of a company. Uh, unless you're in the bubble of people who travel or have heard about it from people who travel, you don't know Airbnb. A lot of people don't know Airbnb. It's a company worth billions and billions of dollars and no one knows about it. <laughs> So let's uh, jump into it. Oh, before I jump into it, I just wanted to make one comment. I'll go into detail about this a little bit more when I do my on-site review. But this house Airbnb is, is a great Airbnb for uh, two reasons. And I'm saying it's a great Airbnb as opposed to someplace you might want to live for two reasons. The first is this right here is a mosque. So it called to prayer five times a day. And also I'm on the fifth floor, but there's no elevator. So you have to walk. So if you were deciding if you wanted to live here, then you have to, you have to be okay with, this is not that big of a deal, but you have to be okay with uh, next door to a mosque and also being uh, walking up five flights of stairs every day, whenever you go up and down. But if it's, it's a genius Airbnb, because if someone's here coming to the city, well, they're much more, likely to rationalize, okay, yeah, it'd be nice to have an elevator, but for the view, I'll, I'll forego the five flights of stairs, you know, just for my week vacation, three, four or five days. I um, mean, you know, I can forego this, I'll wear some earplugs or something, whatever. So I mentioned that because it's things like this that makes the investment worth it or not. If someone is selling this for a residential home, it, it's probably marked down being the penthouse without an elevator. I'm not, I'm not sure how exactly it works, but I'm guessing it, it fetches less of a price because those are big negatives to be on the top floor, but you also have to walk five flights of stairs every single day. But if you're a savvy investor and you're thinking, well, you know, the value here on Airbnb is much higher than it is selling it as a residential unit. So anyways, whoever bought this took, took advantage of that. Let's jump into it, okay? Got my notes. The first thing is um, Airbnb is hard work. It's not passive. I want you to get that idea. I'm speaking to new Airbnb hosts. And if you're an existing subscriber of mine, you've been following me, this is probably a good refresher for you. And I hope that you'll share your knowledge in the comments section for new Airbnb hosts. Uh, what's the saying? A rising tide lifts all boats. So don't, don't think you don't want more Airbnb hosts. You do want more Airbnb hosts and you want them to be good. That will bring in more guests. If you bring in bad hosts, that guest has a bad experience. That guest never come back. That guest tells other people not to use Airbnb. Let's make everyone better. That will make, that will make everyone more profitable. So yeah, the idea of passive Airbnb, get that out of your head. It's really, it's the exception and not the rule. If you're advanced, like most of my existing subscribers are, Airbnb can be closer to passive income than a real job. But don't go into it with that mindset because you really have to learn how to optimize different parts of the Airbnb business in order for it to become passive. After all, you're dealing with humans. So how that's pretty hard to make that passive. It's a lot of it is going in with the right expectations. This is one of them. The other one is, Figure out what your money goals are and your expenses. Well, how much do you actually think you're gonna make from this? Even if it's not right, it's better to have a prediction. How much do you think you can rent it out per night, doing a little bit of research, even if that's just going on Airbnb? And what kind of expenses do you think you'll come? Because if you think you get $1,000 a month, 
but you have no idea what your expenses are, well, $1,000 doesn't really matter so much. So take those things, two things into consideration to set your expectations. How much do you think you can make? How much will it, will you cut, will it, uh, you have to spend to make that money? This is an investment. Number three, you're a small business owner. Airbnb host equals small business owner. Okay, that's the mindset you have to go into. I did a mindset video. I refer to it often. I'm going to link it up here. The successful hosts, the difference is the mindset. That's it. The mindset. So I, I really want to change your mindset. If I can do that, if I can alter your mindset, then I'm changing your thought process and your thinking and how you approach Airbnb hosting in all aspects. That's my ultimate goal. Watch that video if you have some time after this. But um, when you're running a small business, uh, you're, you're involved in marketing. Okay, You can't just put up your listing and think that's that. You're, how do you market your space? You're involved, of course, now in the finance, the accounting part of it, getting money. You're, you're involved in sourcing cleaners and linens. You're involved in maintenance, in cleaning, in customer service. That's a big one. While you can hire a property manager, and I have a few articles about whether or not you actually should and how to find good ones, I suggest that for the first month, you do everything yourself. Really get a good hang of it. It's really not that hard. With the exception of the customer service, some of us just don't have it in us, like me. That brings us to number four, customer service. You're dealing with humans. You're dealing with guests. You're dealing with guests from all walks of life. It's all part of parts of country. Some know your language, some don't. If you don't have the personality where you can relax and the customer is always right mindset, it's a good idea to hire out a property manager, but I still recommend that you take some time and go through the full reservation, clean the, clean the house, get to know the whole business as you are a small business owner now, you're an entrepreneur as an Airbnb host, get to know the whole business. Number five, there's gonna be issues. There's gonna be issues that you have to deal with whether it's how you set up your check-in process, the guest doesn't know the code, can't figure out the lock, couldn't find the lockbox, whether it's the guest couldn't work, figure out the TV, the bed is too hard, the room is too bright, the burner doesn't work, the hot water isn't hot enough. There's a lot of issues that can come up. And if you think some of those are ridiculous, just tell me in the comments after you host for a month. Uh, that the things I just said are the mild things. There's some pretty crazy um, complaints and issues that pop up when you welcome a stranger into your house. You know, that wiggle you do to the bathroom uh, flusher to get it to flush properly or the three seconds you hold it down. Well, all these little odd things with your house, guests don't know this, it's gonna break. And it's also gonna break on a Friday or Saturday night or Sunday morning, Monday morning. And to go along with that, there's um, the issues. You're gonna wanna have someone to fix these issues. So this is the next point. This is kind of on-call person, handyman, electrician, plumber, all of these things. Ideally, you can work with a local contractor. It's always better to work with someone local. They're, they'll, they'll work at a more flexible schedule. They're also a small business owner rather than hiring a uh, business and them sending an employee. I have much better experience working with a local small business, even if it's a little pr pricier than hiring um, the big box you know, handyman uh, or cleaner situation. Cleanliness is going to be one of your top priorities. That's because someone's cleanliness level, depending on where they are and, who, and who, you know, where they're from, how they were raised, can be, can range a whole gamut of different experiences from, you know, a hair uh, in, in the bed or on the floor require, calls for a whole house getting re-cleaned to someone, uh, you know, trash in the fridge or in the garbage. They just kind of ignore it, don't even tell you about it. But you have to clean for the cleanliest person who you might welcome into your house. And that depends a little bit on your on your budget. Are you a budget listing or a luxury listing? But the cleanliness will have to get figured out. That's the source of most complaints on Airbnb, cleanliness issues. And I have a vacation rental uh, cleaning checklist. It's available from my website. I'll link it here and the link in the description. It lays out the difference between residential cleanings and Airbnb vacation rental cleanings. And it lays out by room. There's the different kinds of things you want to do in these different rooms. A big one is um, looking for lost items or stolen or damaged items. Residential cleaner does not do that. A vacation rental cleaner needs to do that. And that's why it's also good to work with a local cleaner who's going to be having the same cleaners coming over and over so they really get to know your house. The next point is about customer service issues. Just uh, understand that people aren't going to value your time. You might go through all this effort to clean the space and you think it's really clean and they don't. You might have went, you might have thought for a half a day what kind of welcome gift you can get. You went to the local bakery and you got the local chocolate and you put it there and they didn't even say thank you. You got to expect that. Now I have a story. It was about, I was working at Airbnb at the time. It was 2013, I think. I convinced, I was with roommates. I convinced them to host on Airbnb. We had a guest, I think she was a Chinese girl. She was at my home 
and I, I like I said, I was working at Airbnb. It was the morning, and she, I think she forgot her uh, luggage or something important in my house. And for some reason, she couldn't go back, or maybe I offered to bring it to her. But I, I left my work at Airbnb, and I went. To, I thought this would be okay because it was an Airbnb guest after all. I went to my house and I got it, and I went to the to the airport and I delivered her this bag urgently because her flight was coming up. And um, she said thanks. That was that. And then um, the next day, when she left the review, I kid you not, the review said like it was an okay stay or something like that. Like. I don't even get a good review for this. And I got in a little bit of trouble at work because, you know, I was gone for like an hour and a half or so fixing this guest issue. So that's a, that's a prime example. Guests didn't really care, uh, didn't value any of my time or effort in bringing her something, something I didn't have to do. Least she could have done was leave me a review. Didn't even do that. I think it was a five-star review, but it was just like, you know, a couple words. Like, yeah, okay, you know, okay. You can sense I'm still a little bit bitter from that. Okay, final two points here. The guests are not your customers. Now, if you're new to this channel, I use the word FPG often. That's, that stands for future potential guest. These folks, and they become guests when they arrive at your space and they book your space, these guests are not your friends. And what I mean by that is don't take so much of their time. If you do a live check-in, for example, there's most hostess isn't a problem. It's more of a problem with hosts who host in their house or they do live check-ins. And there's been a few live check-ins where the hosts talk to me for 30, 45 minutes. It's just too much. Number one, because the guest has been traveling all day, the guest is not gonna remember what you're telling them. It should go in a digital guidebook anyways. Uh, if the get, if you're staying in a house, the guest, uh, the host, you as a host might, don't don't talk to the guest so much. Kind of read read them and figure out how much interaction they want. But the default should be, they're not your friend, they are your customer. So treat them that way. And finally, slow season. This is always an issue for everyone. You may or may not think about it before you get into get into Airbnb hosting. But lucky for you, I've written an article and, excuse me, a, blog, uh, a video on this. I'm gonna link the video up here. It's an Airbnb quick tip just like this. I do these, I try and do these once a week. I try and keep them about five minutes. This one is clearly a little bit longer. Just trying to scratch the level. Just trying to introduce you with these videos to a topic that maybe you may or may not have thought about and get your brain working so that you can think a little bit more about how you can optimize whatever subject I'm thinking of. Short, uh, slow season strategies is an issue for almost all hosts. You, need, you should be planning for it year round. It's really not that hard, but you can limit the effects of short, uh, of slow seasons, which is you know lowered occupancy, lowered nightly rates, etc. An Airbnb hosts uh, worst nightmare. If you have some free time after this video, go ahead and click that link. Uh, rewind the video, I guess at this point, click that link. I'll put it up again right here and watch that video. Let me know what you think. And as always, I would appreciate uh, a like and I'll see you in the comments. Happy hosting. Mm -hmm.